We're here at EGX 2016. Um, I'm here with Mitch, uh, who is part of the Mannequin. What was your role on the Mannequin? So I'm the studio director. Studio director. Cool. Um, so do you want to just talk us a little bit, talk to us about what the Mannequin is? I've had a little go on it. I loved it, but just, uh, just kind of what is the Mannequin? Yeah, sure. So basically, the Mannequin is a narrative horror game. It's set in this old, creepy uh, London townhouse that's been abandoned since the uh, 50s. And the family that used to live there uh, died under mysterious circumstances and you're basically entering this house for the first time and through the game you'll find out what happened to the family, how they died and um, yeah there's a, there's a few twists to the story but you'll basically find out like what happened to them and what led up to them dying. Cool. Um, and so it plays out, uh, the, the first, my first impression of it, the very, very beginning, I was like, okay, I know what's going on here. I've played these kind of horror games before. But pretty much as soon as you meet the mannequin um, in the title, everything kind of changes. Um, so what, what did you want to do with this game to kind of make it not just another indie horror game? So the game is, we're aiming for the game to last for about two to three hours. Cool. And in that, what we're trying to do is we didn't want to make a really long game and not have enough uh, enough quality in it basically we've gone for kind of quality over quantity but basically it's all about um, messing with players expectations so you think you know what's going to happen and maybe sometimes it does like we make you think oh yeah okay I know what's going to happen here and then sometimes we change the rules a little bit and, and we surprise you and I think that's that's what we're trying to do differently in this game and I, I think it's important for all horror games to be honest and, and films as well as is you don't really know what's going to happen next and that keeps you in a suspense because I guess humans, we like to know what's going to happen, and, and a lot of us like to be in control. Like, okay, we, we know if we do something, this is going to happen. But we're trying to take that gently away from the player, so you never quite know what's going to happen. You just you always feel slightly unsettled. So even though you've been in this room ten times already, the next time you go in, something different is going to happen, and you just don't know what's going to happen. So that's what we're kind of aiming for: is just that that slight unsettled unpredictability that. Yeah, that you, you kind of feel when you're when you're exploring. Cool. Uh, one of the things as well, the protagonist that you play, um, Sally, was it? Uh, Lisa. Lisa. I don't know where Sally came from. Um, <laughs> yeah, the protagonist that you play, Lisa. Um, from that, I didn't really know too much about who she was or what she was doing. That is that part of the, what you're going for, or will you know more in the full game? So that you will know f uh, more in the full game. I mean, the reason that it's fairly um, uh, ambiguous, I suppose, in the demos because we haven't quite finalised some of those details. But generally speaking. Um, You've kind of the, the what we're going on at the moment is that you've bought the house and you're going to be exploring it for the first time. So it's it's basically no one's lived here for ages, so you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. Cool. Um, the other thing that I really liked, um, obviously, light is always a huge part of horror games and how you play with it. And you're not very kind to your players with light, are you? With the light that you have? No, definitely not. I mean, it's still things we're making changes to. Um, I mean, as we're able to bring the game to events like this, we can actually see people play it and we can get people's reactions and, and lots of people, we can sp speak to them after they play the game, which is really good. But the light that you've got is basically your mobile phone. And obviously the mobile phone has a very different light to like a torch. So we're kind of tr we're trying to balance between making it realistic because it's a mobile phone and you can't light a whole room with it. But at the same time, making people, it's yeah, it's tricky getting that balance right. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's why it's not a very great light. Is no, it's a phone. It, it seems I, I, it seems really cool because the way what I really liked about it is you walk into a room and yeah the the chair right next to you is very very lit up but there is nothing else that you can see in that room yeah um, and that's really great going forward then it's so so two to three hours you reckon the game plays yeah that's be. what we're aiming for and it's all about finding out what happened in this house or is it about getting out of this house yourself like um, if, it's if you, basically yeah. finding out what happened to the family yeah I mean as you um, as you explore the house you'll find these rolls of film that are kind of scattered around and you can actually develop these in a dark room and the, these photos that you develop actually trigger scenes and these scenes what will happen is you'll you'll walk into a room and the room will transform so it will look like it did in the 50s so you've been into like the living room a few times and there's just like old dust sheets over the sofa and there's not much in the room there's lots of cobwebs but when you when you when the scene triggers the room changes and, and you've got like the fire going the 50s tvs are and there's like an old record player playing the vinyl and you're basically back in, in what was essentially like the 50s but these creepy little mannequins uh, are stood around in the room talking and they basically play out the family so through these mannequins you get to find out what happened to the family and basically the, the events that eventually led up to them dying. Cool. 
Um, I noticed as well that everything, almost everything is interactable, but you haven't left it to just kind of picking stuff up and putting it back down. You can play with everything as well. Like I, I was sitting in front of the TV, kind of flicking it on and back off to, to see if that would evoke anything. Um, is, it, is there like going to be hidden stuff that will trigger more things or is it? You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in the current demo, um, from what we've got now, we're planning to have a lot more detail in the environment. I mean, a lot of it will probably come down to how much time we have near the end of development. But yeah, a lot of the little details. I mean, basically, there's a lot of games that have a lot of stuff in the environment that you can pick up, but it gets a little bit boring after a while. Like, okay, here's a pencil. Yeah, it's cool, but it's just a pencil. So we're trying to add lots of little rewards, uh, little, little details. So yeah, there's like a radio and you can change the tuning and, yeah. and depending on what frequency you get, you might actually pick up like some, some weird sounds. And there's this like, I guess you could call them Easter eggs, but they're the extra things. So if people like exploring and like discovering every little nook and cranny, there should be things like that in the game for them. So when when can we expect to see it? When can we have a go on it um, officially? So so the game we're aiming for launch um, between March, April next year. It's not a firm release date. But that's what we're aiming for. Cool. Uh, it's going to be launching on PC and Mac first, and it'll be available on Steam and, and various other um, PC gaming websites. Awesome. And and we're intending to do a console launch, but that'll be later in the year. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. Um, have you had any big scares today? I think I, I jumped a little bit on the chair. We have had a few, yeah. yeah. We had, we've had a few people that literally just walked away. Oh, really? It was too much for them. Okay. So, yeah, that's quite fun. Cool. Well, yeah, well, look out for the mannequin then. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. I'm here at EGX 2016. I'm just going to get the cuts out of that. I'm here at EGX 2016, that sounded really weird. Uh, Mitch. Mitch. Cool. Yeah, I would have said Mark and that would have been wrong. <laughs> so that's good.